the word of Yahweh Elion El Elohim is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant, great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sith Kanu, to the highest the only righteous Lord of a God who reigns forever and forever. In the attributes of him who has been called to be as Kokma and wisdom and the Greek word called as Sophia, where in the present evil of today's Christendom as well as in the world, the attribute of that name of the Lord of a God being kept to a humanoid and thinking that it could be a replacement for resurrection it could be a place where the dead man can speak when they could take the DNA extracted from them and tell that humanoid to think what was the thinking of that process. We are not dealing with the wisdom of this world. Neither keeping a name to such humanoid can cause them to be the Kokma of Christ. The great thing for with you and I have been kept alive in this great and unique dispensation of the church age is to glorify the Lord of our God to the maximum by seeking the true life in Christ. The true life which has been found only in Christ and in nothing else. This true life is what you and I have been made. The greater plan wherewith Adam failed to continue with and Christ our Lord our God fulfilled as a second Adam or a last Adam. And that great plan what he was, he tells for us right now being in the same old sin nature of the flesh. Yet being put to death the deeds of the flesh. If we are with Christ, if we are risen with Christ, seek the things that are of the heaven and not the things of this earth. And demanding for every believer in Christ to walk a life, a life of truth. A true life in the right reverence of the Lord our God and for his wisdom. Not the wisdom of this world, professing wise who become fools. Not the wisdom of this earth where they think it's great and it is stronger than the wisdom of God. But these morons and infidels will never understand. The foolishness of my Lord, my God, my rock, my salvation is far greater, superior and stronger than the wisdom of this world. Because what he is, is only a man. How can you compare a divine thing to a man? He cannot even be qualified to compare. But yet our Lord, our God has made for us, though we are on this earth for a short span of time, in a pilgrimage trip, to gleam forth to make the world to understand. As our Lord our God tells for us in Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4, the brightness of him that shall shine. How many translations have been there into it? We are not worried, but we go back and look into the original Hebrew. The original Hebrew talks for us to understand in a very simple, beautiful language of it, which teaches to us in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the brightness as the light, she is becoming gleam. And what is that word becoming? For that word we have higher, which is nothing but I am the one who I am, Sattva so Lord of our God. And by that we mean it comes to exist. By that we mean it will certainly appear. 
by that we learn that it is the Lord's word when we are using the sword of the Spirit, which is nothing but the word of the Lord our God in our day by day life and walk in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And when we live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we exist to become Lord's greatest children of all time in this world ever been created. Because in the past that privilege was not been given, but in the present we have been given the process of enlightenment day by day. That's what the brightening of the light is all about, enlightenment. And why the wisdom of this world is reigning over the wisdom of Christ, do you know? Because of the failure of the so-called pastor teachers who are standing in the pulpits. Who haven't truly understood what is the right purpose of being a pastor teacher to the church. How they can tell the words of life when Lord our God himself said to Peter to teach that we have been appointed to preach the words of life. The Rima of Zoe, the highest and the blessed life given for this church age. Or in fact indeed for any creature on this earth that they can think they can have any other greater life than the concept of Zoe which has been designed for us. It is not Bios. And what the word says, the gleam shall be coming out. The words gleam to be more specific in the Hebrew to give you an example. The way how you have the ivory tusks of an elephant and which is clearly visible. And there is a lot deal of scam of those ivory tasks in my India as well because in my country India elephant is the animal which they lovely which they certainly love to take it as a greatest one in fact when Alexander the Great when he was supposed to conquer India he wanted to purchase those elephants for his army and train them up the appearance of those ivory tasks is what it will be gleamed out it what it will be appear and that's the meaning which we can find in the hebrew the horns of him will be certainly made known and who are the people of that horn we are being called in the church age to be his light we are the people in this church age to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the holy spirit to shine like light and salt principle on this earth we are the people who have been called when the people will come on this world's wisdom to produce and we are the people we come to tell produce your in fact the greatest town's arguments and we know there is nothing that can stand before the wisdom of the Lord of God the Kakma the Sophia of Christ and what do we do? We teach the wisdom of Lord of God in a mystery among them who are mature who are perfect And those mature people are the ones who love to take in the word of the Lord of our God in a day by day process because they have been designed for a greater purpose in Christ. So, in brightness as the light, and you know what is the Hebrew word light? Or, O R. This word takes a lot of time for us to explain, but we need to explain that. Before that, we can do it is a must that we need to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Without being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we cannot even call our Lord as Lord. And constantly grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is working death in you, not the true concept of life that could be produced in you. The death that which works, you are absolutely being estranged from the plan of the life of Lord of our God and therefore you have been called as aliens. We are not being called to live a life of aliens. We are being called to have a right obedience to the already given declaration of his commandments for us in the Old Testament at the same time not keeping the law because law has been abolished but the New Testament law to be controlled of the Spirit to be in the in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit demands that you need to live in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and if these are the positive commands we have been told in the negative realm not to grieve not to squelch and not to lie and not to blaspheme neither to wax the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit as Isaiah 63 also teaches to us they have waxed against me therefore I have fought against them that should not be the fate of us because we have been given everything or anything because you believe it or not the highest and the greatest and the loftiest ultimate of privileges have been bestowed upon the sinful mankind in this church age and what it is you are grieving and squelching and lying the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit you are not able to understand at the moment of salvation you have been set apart for Lord's work you have been set apart for Lord's glory and what is that Lord's work And yet you say what it is, we don't know, to get a witness for his truth. You are being born to be like a king in Christ, to witness for his truth. 
you are being made to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, moment by moment. While you are there in the flesh of this earth, Adama, you are no longer to be in the flesh of that earth, but you have been called to be the artist. You knew not now the old man, you knew not the only, not the new man. Though you are been there in the fellowship of this flesh and blood, you are been called to witness the truth. And that's what Arete is, the new man will be created. And what a great privilege it is for us, do you know, to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, day by day, breath by breath, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. How can you stay away from the greatest dynamic life ever given to you in this church age? This greatest dynamic life which not existed in the past or will be given again in the future, but it's only for us right now to enjoy it and to have fellowship with it all the time. Because you don't have the light. There is no shedding of light in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You cannot understand the scriptures. The greatest genius of this world, even in fact indeed, no matter whoever he may be, if he's not a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for him, the kakma of this world will result in such humanoids. The kakma of this world will make him to forget Christ because Christ of Lord our God said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And he said, those who die in me shall rise again. Those who sleep in me shall rise again. And Romans chapter 10 verse 17 teaches to us, those who believe that I have been raised from the dead, they shall be certainly saved and they shall have the eternal life. But the world comes in its wisdom to tell. We are now organizing a great resurrection body through the terms of humanoids. We are going to organize the great things with cryonics and clonings. That's the foolishness. To whomsoever it may consider, dear brethren, Ecclesiastes 8 1 teaches to us. Who he thinks he is wise, the first word wise is kakma. And the second word wise which has been used there in the translation of Noah in the KJV, it calls there in the Greek kokma and we are dealing with the things of kokma, not with kakham, or the wisdom of this world. In the wisdom of this world you will not use rebound, we know that. In the wisdom of this world you come to do the things pertaining to man and not the things pertaining to God. Therefore you tell there is no use of rebound. Therefore you will tell no need to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore you will tell we shall do this and we shall survive. No. It is grace upon grace. And what our Lord our God has designed for us to be in grace, to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every breath of your life, every breath. And whether you believe it or not, every breath. After believing in my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my God, my Savior, it is a must that you should be at every breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, whenever we begin our sermon, whenever we have been there into before beginning of the sermon, we make a silent prayer to the Lord of our God to tell, Father, teach us, enlighten us, and lead us for thy truth, because we are here being kept alive only for thy truth to witness it, and nothing else than that. The beginning of it, we have been praying every day because we cannot get out of the prayer. Because we are not dealing with the dead things of the world. The sword of the Spirit is the word of the Lord of our God, dear brethren. And if we don't rely on the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, take it granted, you can never learn even a single thing. And no matter, you may have the greatest weapon ever given to you in your hand, the Bible, the written, completed can of scripture in our hands, in the original Hebrew, Greek or Aramaic, whatever you go and take and learn. Yet you are a weaponless man if you don't have that in your mind. And what is the process for it? Day by day gapping it, day by day learning it, grace apparatus of perception, day by day growing in it. Proverbs 8.34 teaches for us what is that we need to grow up day by day. What a great privilege it is for us are those men who wait upon the doorpost of the Lord our God day by day, yesterday, today, tomorrow to wait and to learn the greatest divine illumination given for us in this church age in the completed canon of scripture. Our entire life, if it could be summarized in Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 2 and 4 or 2, 3 and 4, we would certainly understand what is the purpose when Christ our Lord our God has said that we shall be like the light luminary shining on this earth. In spite of all the protection that has been ever given to you, whether you imagine, believe it or not, or consider it or not. The Hebrew word or, which means to say light. The brightness of the light of Habakkuk 3.4, which shall shine. 
which shall show forth higher and which shall certainly let you know what it is that it will come into existence it will come into the reality to visible for other people as well does not Isaiah chapter 2 tells for us come let us walk in the light of the Lord our God that's not the same Isaiah writes for us they don't have light to certainly distinguish what is perfect and correct does not we learn to origin when we have the Old Testament and samples for an example to teach even the great priestly blessing what they used to give in Numbers chapter 6 let the light of the face of the Lord our God shine upon thee what does it mean to say shine how can it shine if it doesn't have light in it and what is the great context of the people over here all the time they look no shining in the darkness in the midst of this world even when Apostle Paul writes for us in Philippians 2 14 and 15 like the way that you hold forth the word of the Lord of God like a light luminaries holding forth the mind of Christ you need to shine among this dead powers crooked generations and what the priestly blessing would be let the face of the shine let the face of the Lord of God like light shine upon thee and bless thee and keep thee what is that light we are not seeking any new commandments that's what even one john writes for us we are not writing the new commandments that which has been already given to you and we are giving you for you to understand to walk in the fellowship of Lord god the holy spirit if you have the sperm of christ you cannot sin and has he if you have been abiding in the lord has he walked so you need to walk this greatest verses of all time dear brethren revealed and given for the sinful mankind on this earth if they would ever learn from the right bona fide gifted pastor teacher who is a male spiritual one do you know how your lives would get transformed and by the time in metamorphosized while you're yet alive on this earth you will certainly reach your spiritual resurrection though you are acting the physical body do you know how because you have been thinking about only Lord's will and Lord's light and those who do Lord's will do you know how it is their face will shine like a lion they will be bold in their face appearances as well do you know why because they have been walking in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit their face will so shine as the way when the Israelites came along to look upon the face of Moses they said we cannot look upon your glory cover your face Christ our Lord our God face also was been shined when the people understood the two the two on the incident of the Mount of Transfiguration and for believers they have been told you if you are bold like a lion your face will shine with the word of truth and these things have been written long back for us in the Hebrew of his scale of the things pertaining to Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 1 the same thing told for us by Apostle Paul before Apostle Paul could exemplify for us Christ our Lord our God says in a very simple principle you are the light of this world and you are the salt of this earth what a great privilege do you know what it is that has been ever bestowed upon the sinful mankind such a great privilege which is ours which belongs to us which is our glory which is our response God created man in his own image but constantly right from the beginning the Adama is not walking because his characteristics are always against the right word if it were not so he wouldn't have heard his wife dear brethren we shall have a word of prayer and learn what it is Father, as we are going to study these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these terms. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen. The Hebrew word which has been told for us, or, our light, our brightness, which could be called in the terms of illuminary light, sunlight, or enlightenment, or in the terms of happiness or cheerfulness. If you have light, then only you are happy, dear brethren. And therefore we find in Proverbs 8, 34, come and to take that light, or in the terms of come and take and learn, this happiness is what we give for you day by day. This light is so essential for us in the very concept of the Bible. It could be used literally or metamorphically, or in the terms of metaphorical. Lord of God is associated with the light all the time. Genesis 
It has been used for us to understand by looking upon the nature at least. It's an indication of time, like daybreak and daylight. It is a light luminaries in the space, where the sun has a greater light and the moon has a lesser light. It has been indicated to the stars of light, like a clock, they regulate the seasons. And you should understand what it is. And he has been exemplifying to the people while they were in the wilderness, God's pillar of fire, which has been displayed by the light. So that they could walk in the paths of Yahweh Elohim, what he has already given for them. And there are no new commandments for it to be added. The completed Bible for us in the 66 books is enough. When we have been placed in this wilderness of the pilgrimage trip, the narrow road, what you need to seek, the right road which have to go through the glorifying, pleasing of Lord God, the Trinity who indwells in us. You don't seek your own pleasure because Lord our God has said you are not been bought of your, you, you have been bought with a great price and you are not of your own. You need to please and glorify the Father in heaven. So what does his walk is all about? He traces us the right path in the light. Therefore, we find the greatest things constantly telling for us in Psalms 119, 105, thy word is a is a light to my foot, O Lord, so that I have to walk in this wilderness that could not only harm me, but in return that could not harm you by giving for you, grieving and squelching and lying by the fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit, what you have given. But in return, we have been given this flesh as a Shekinah glory and the temple of the Lord of our God. And we walk in the fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit. And what do we do? And we tell, Lord, thou hast to be glorified in us. That's the path what you need to walk. That's the path what you need to learn. And who is going to train you up? The divine mentoring guide, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When you come back and look and understand the KT theology, the Neetang theology, when you make up your mind to have a true light in you, the true life in you, and that's the fear of the reverence of the Lord of our God that certainly causes you to understand his wisdom, his kokma. The skeptics can't understand that. And we refer those skeptics to the wisdom of this world as Sophia, what they have invented now. They can think to the most. Such robots or such humanoids could be a great help to talk to the one who have been dead. But dear brethren, do you know where these humanoids will be better? If you can ask in my country, India or any other parts of the world where the politicians are changing their words when they could tell. Before the election they will do such and such. These humanoids will be better placed there because they stick to their word, because what they have been fed that they will do. But it is not usable in this humankind for resurrection, where the people think it could be used for resurrection in Christ, in the replacement of Christ. And the resurrection body, what we get? Can the humanoids eat and drink? Can the humanoids can, can pass through the closed doors? Does not Christ have a lot of God exemplified for our stupid minds to tell long back? See, I have the same resurrection body. Give me something to eat. He proved by eating the broiled fish and honeycomb to tell that he was the Lord of a God in the resurrection body. The humanoids cannot eat and drink. The humanoids cannot go through the closed door where he came when the disciples were been there in the upper room when the door was been closed. He passed through the doors. This resurrection body is not this humanoid, dear brethren. And if you don't wake up to this fact and believe lies, then you will be concluding your matter of life in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 18 through 31 and you will be stumbling your own life there itself. But for us, Christ is the power of God. We have his wisdom, we have his sanctification, we have his redemption. We share his righteousness. Since we share his redemption and his righteousness given for us graciously, we love to grow upon in the terms of sanctification given to us day by day, learning the mind of Christ in the process of his wisdom, not the wisdom of this world. At least looking upon the nature, at least how our Lord of our God has been associated with light. How he has made every believer to be the light and salt principle on this earth. At least looking upon the nature, at least, which has been taken day by day in its right course of action, in its right method of action. At least wake up for the truth. But you know what is happening today in our Christendom? Enemies inside are greater than the enemies from outside. That's what a sad part in my country, India, as well as today when we look on the date of 12th Jan 2018. The Supreme Court and the four judges of it 
came out to seek the right justice in the, in the presence of media, in the presence of the people. Do you know what does it mean? No truth in the inward parts of such high judicial authority as well. Far less the people can think they are able to do the right things and judge themselves they are right. And I'm talking about the wisdom of this world. But before Christ our Lord our God, He makes our, op our mouth to open, our palate to have in truth, our mouth to talk only the righteous deeds of the Lord and our lips for us. If there is anything that is against the character of Christ, it's an abomination. This rule has been given for us long back when God created man in His own image. He cannot make his own terms. He cannot make his own commandments. He has given for us long back to walk in those commandments. Not to have your mental reasoning to tell. When our Lord our God has said no, the Adam and Eve would have said no to the things pertaining to the beguiling nature of Satan, which is deceiving today as well by blinding the minds of these unbelievers not to know. In fact, indeed, the enemies within are right or from the enemies from outside, the church members are also walking in the same paths of the beguiling nature of Eve. Of Satan which beguiled them. They love to compromise with the things of this earth. The enemies within they court the scriptures as a person thinks so he is and what the things for a person to be seems right that will be for him at the end a wrong thing because Lord has not put it out. But they are talking about the person. When Proverbs is talking about he's talking about a Adama, he's not talking about Aretas. And who are the persons? Those Adama are nothing but those people who don't love to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine day by day. For them it is a hard thing to come and learn the mind of Christ day by day. For them it is a hard thing to live off their tongues. For them it is a hard thing to not to worry about their miracles and healings because their business runs upon miracles and healings and tongues. They are the people who say, for a man thinks the ways are right. And when we come and teach day by day, and we ask them to defend the truth in the Christ day by day. They say, it is your way, but it is not my way. It is the way of the Lord our God, long back, given for us in Proverbs 8.34. Because you don't have the light of Christ in you. You have been still there in the darkness. You don't have the cockma of Christ in you, yet you love to do the wisdom of this world. If not, you would have done the wisdom of Christ. You would have learned the sanctification process of Christ. You would have learned to understand the righteousness of the Lord our God, which has made us to put upon the new clothes, the new clothes of a new man, made in the terms of Endikai Sunekai Hosetis Thessalithia. You would have walked in it. Therefore, you come to prove your arguments. Produce it. Let's look. Let's see what the Bible tells and what you think. Let's look what the Bible tells in the version language of the scriptures and we learn what the mind of Christ tells for us. But since we know the people don't change, there are time for right exegesis, isagogics and categories to study. If you have been appointed as a pastor of the church, what is your work? Your work is to do a greatest justification to the Lord our God. Do you know when is your rest? When you die, then is your rest. Till that time you don't have any rest for you. How can you let go breath by breath, not having the thoughts of mind in the people where the people have been given for you under their care? When you don't have the thoughts of a divine realm in your mind, how can you feed them to the thoughts of these people to understand as Habakkuk tells for us in Habakkuk 3 to within the years of mine, O Lord, remove my roguish thinking, the roguish activities of my thoughts. Because of your compassions, because of your great mercies and everlasting kindness, we haven't been yet consumed. Though so, Lord, help us to come out of that roguish mind within the years of me. And what is that within the years of all the thought patterns of you, all the age or the whole life that you have been kept alive in the plan of Lord of our God to live a true life, to live a true life by, by having a right reverence to the wisdom of God and not to have a reverence or fear towards the wisdom of this world. What is the world? The world perishes off. And we are not worried about that world any longer. We are worried about our heavenly world for which we and I have been kept alive. Representing that heavenly realm on this earth is our purpose. How can you do that if you don't have the light of the word of the Lord of our God being taught for you day by day? And many people yet don't learn this word. 
They're having enemies within. The Christian pastors from Kleptes to Sherura's oriented minded one. They don't make to cleanse the temple which has been occupied with the den of thieves. Kleptes, Lestes. They don't clean those men who have been hired servants, Mistotes. They don't get out from such idiots who have been called as stupas, who are arrogant, who are proud not to teach the word of the Lord our God day by day. Who will change the covenant of the Lord our God for lies. The Sharuras, the Tiflos. And what are these men they do day by day? They day by day dilute. Telling that this is the light what we have. The day by day make your eyes to be dimmed with the eye with the sight of this world, and they will never make you to look the sight of the Lord of a God, which is the only light for us. They never cause you to look. And that is what half the people are all about. And who are the people? Adama ground. They are not the people to realize the new man which has been put for them in the spirit demands a purity in your spirit, soul and flesh. They are the Adama of this earth. But yet we have been made from the Adama of this earth. We have been told in 2 Corinthians when Apostle Paul very specifically tells for us the man whom I knew in the flesh I no longer knew the flesh from where I knew that man but now I am living for Christ. I am a slave to the righteousness of the Lord my God. That great principle from Adama to Aretas, wherewith we are being now called to live in the walk, uh, to live and to walk in the righteousness and in the fellowship of His truth, to put on the new man, consider the new work. We have been dead to the old man. Far less the people have a time to speak about sin, preach about sin. How many days more you want to drink milk? If you aren't a grown-up guy, and if you don't require some food for you to eat, how many days more you want to still drink milk? There are, of course, some of the samples given for us in the human friends whom we get along. Till the age of 20 years, they have been drinking milk, and now they are not able to digest the other things of the physical food. They are men like that. And how many days more you want to be like that? Can't you take your responsibilities laid down upon your shoulder through Christ, which has been given for us by taking His light, holding for the word of the Lord of God like a light and shining among the midst of these powers and crooked generations in this darkness of this earth? Know ye not the fruit of the light of the Spirit? Ephesians 5 9, Agatha, Sunya, Dikaya, Sunya, and Alatia. Know ye not for which you have been kept alive to wear the fruit in Christ all the time? And yet, what you want? You want someone to feed you all the time. This great revolution, the sword of the spirit. The name of Yahweh itself is revolution for us. This great sword of the spirit. The completed can of scripture, Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21. Ought to be witnessed by every believer on this earth as a king. Because for which we have been born, when Christ our Lord our God was been cautioned by Pontius Pilate, he said, Yes, as you say, I am a king, I have been born to witness the truth. Do you know for where we have been born again in Christ? To witness this great infallible and inerrant word of the Lord our God. We are not been born for any other things on this earth which could mean for you to be greater. We are been born only to witness his truth, his kakma. And that kakma, dear brethren, is our life. That kakma rejoices in the light of the word of the Lord our God. Therefore, in the midst of this wilderness, the path which Lord our God, our God, has been trained and kept for us in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has reshored for them as a God's pillar of fire, as light being displayed, so that the glory, when the sons of Israel wandered in the wilderness, could realize what it was. Likewise, for us in this pilgrimage trip of this wilderness, Christ our Lord, our God, has given a light in the midst of this darkened, perverse, crooked generation. He has given us the light. What is that light? The true life, the true purpose, the true orientation. And that life for which you and I have been kept alive to live a life of full. Not just to die as a premature physical death. To die like just you have been still a baby or a kid. 
the normal Hebrew life of Kai it calls for us to understand the minimum 70 to 80 years when has given much for us and much is expected from us and being the time short how much would we would he expect for us from this life to give more we don't require any new rules to think just cracking the old rules given by the Lord of our God in the book of Bible in the 66 books and you will find your life how you can crack diligently seek him search him and you will be found by him if you don't have the desire to diligently seek him and search him how can he be found by you that's not the scripture say in Proverbs 8 34 those who come diligently who are alert shakat, alert like the way when you're in the intensive care unit and you want a man to supply there all the medicines and you wait there for 24 hours of a program you don't move from there when your friend or your relative who's been giving that at the point of death to provide him all the things and I think no one can give a great example than Abraham why he was been called as a friend to the Lord in the case of Job and David it was a different issue but when it was in the case of Abraham to give his only one son where he promised through his son I shall make like the stars and the sand like the sand of the sea his generations now Christ our Lord our God calls and comes for him to give the test of his friend so what did he do he never hesitated back because he knew the one who gave, he's also able to rise him up. Without going through that life of test of friendship in our life, we cannot be certainly the true friends of my Lord. You will be either a fakery one, or you'll be like a masked oriented, uh, mask oriented friend, or you will be like the one who is absolutely traitor. No man can serve two masters, says the scripture. Either one you will love or the other you will hate. If we are the born slaves of the Lord of our God, then our master is Christ. He has, pro he has promoted you from your slavery to call as friends. Therefore, he has given for you everything completed, canon of scripture. And do you know how it is to shine like light? Why do you want to die a sin unto death? Grieving constantly the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Squelching constantly the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In the midst of this wilderness, dear brethren, nothing is more greater for you to exchange the glorious glory of wisdom of the Lord to the foolishness of this world. Nothing. In fact, when indeed, if you don't have your kids going to tell to the world and seeking the world's wisdom, is not even greater for you to go against the faith step that you can take in the boldness of the Lord of our God when he tells it is I who is going to give you the children and yet you go to seek the world's wisdom is certainly a fakery of the lies in all of your things does not the scripture say you need to honor our Lord of our God in spite in in spite for us given in first Thessalonians 5 to teach in everything give thanks unto the Lord of our God but you walk in his faith and in his truth Yet the people seek their own solutions, the solutions to have everything for them. Learning and obeying Lord's word and to be alert to guard it and to protect it and to live a life of such is enough. He shall give you, though you are a rotten seed, a seed of Holy One. A Holy One by that we mean, for which we have been placed alive on this earth to be called as a Christians, or a little Christ, or without Christ we are nothing. In each and everything, what your mind can think is far greater and the Bible cannot teach to you those things, then erase that thought from your mind. There is nothing on this earth that could be greater than the wisdom of the Lord of our God, what it has been revealed for us in this completed canon of scripture. But it demands what? It demands the light. It demands what if you're an unbeliever to believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's not enough. That's not enough for you to grow up. In the spiritual terms but that's enough for you to be saved but your true life that is going to follow in the eternity as well as being given an example for you on this earth by witnessing to be kings and preach for Christ that true life you're losing it and the short span of time for which you have been placed alive on this earth to shine like a light luminaries of the Lord of our God on this earth when you have lost that 
by showing forth your pseudo lights, by showing forth your false lights. You are going to prove to this world in the hypocritical masks that your lives have not been changed because after you die as well, even the people talk. But the word of the Lord of God says a good name is to be chosen, and the word of the Lord of God says remembering the righteous is a great work. But they don't remember you because you are walking false righteously. You lose over here on this earth, and even in the eternity which is going to come at the judgment seat of Christ for you. Wood, hay and stubble, being not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will produce for you nothing but shame. And do you know how many days it will be? It will be to come upon ages upon ages, says Ephesians 2, 7. This glorious age which has been begun after the new heaven and the new earth being created, the ages of ages which is going to come, till that time you shall lose your rewards. Is it required for you? Better to fear the Lord of a God to prove the right wisdom in Christ rather than thinking the wisdom of this world is greater than the wisdom of Christ. So he was a light in the midst of the wilderness. Christ our Lord of a God is our light in the midst of this pilgrimage trip. He makes all the way for us to go through the suffering so that you can make a right path, the right path of the Lord of a God, so that you can please Lord God Almighty all the time. And that right path is a straight grade where it is not an open door or an open big race. You do not understand if it is an open big race for you which way to walk. But in the midst of this persecution and wilderness, when you have been placed over here on this earth, you walk in the path where Lord of a God will lead you. Does not the scripture say, even the minute thought of you, even the minute direction of you in Psalms, it teaches for us, it will be directed by the Lord of a God. So he's going to make you in this wilderness to make a path, a path of right righteousness in Christ, a path of right truth in Christ, a path of right justice in Christ, and in simple terms, a path of right holiness in Christ. And he tells, if ever we live, we live only for the truth, because we can do nothing against the truth. And to that maturity, every believer ought to come. In this wilderness, he has placed for a path, a path of righteousness and justice in Christ. In this great wilderness, he has made for us day by day to walk in this path. And the flesh being indeed weak, he said for us to strengthen that flesh, kneel down in his presence and be prepared for his glory. How many people will think it's a legalistical or a punishment? We don't mind. But we obey the Bible. We do not obey the things of this earth. In fact, when in Ephesians, Apostle Paul knelt down to pray and to weep and to tell for these people lamentingly. Because their enemy is their God. And what is their God? Their enemy of their God is nothing but their belly. And these are who? These are the enemies of Christ, who crucify once again my Lord day by day. But we are not so. We have been called to show for the heavenly glory of this earth. So that the earth can understand what is that we, when we live on this earth, where we are we a witness of truth, or the heaven of the earth, which has been given for us to realize how we certainly witness when we walk in the path of the Lord our God in righteousness and injustice. The heaven on this earth to represent is our life. And the earth should realize whether we truly showed them the heavenly life or not. And how come the earth can show forth or the earth can learn that we have been done the true life in Christ? Only when you have your conscience clear towards God and towards men. That we speak the mysteries of God. We live the mysteries of life. Of God in our midst as long as we have breath in our nostrils. Because we know the world is in darkened, the world doesn't have the wisdom of the Lord. And when we have the wisdom of the Lord our God, we need to shine. And we need to prove the existence of the Lord in our lives to say, Yes, as our Lord our God been existed, though the same way even we exist, by showing forth an example of the elephant ivory tasks. Every believer in Christ should show forth your witnesses. Therefore, for that reason, he has been there in the past dispensation to teach, like a pillar of fire for them, leading them in the wilderness. And the same thing when you find in the tabernacle, in Numbers chapter 4, verse 9 and 16, and chapter 8, verse 2, light is a sacred lampstand. Where is the light for you if you are the tabernacle of the Lord? If you have the Shekinah glory of the Lord our God, where is the light for you? 
or where is the sacred lamp stand in you and that's nothing but dear brother the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit through your activation of human spirit shining like the sacred lampstand and your life has an altar which shall be constantly a continual burning as a living sacrifice to Christ to give for him the greatest glory how many of the people are really worried about the sacred lampstand or not which is shining in their lives we do not know at least the pastor teachers if they would wake up that every believer has to be the temple of the Lord of a God then he has to have the sacred lampstand and that sacred lampstand should be representing the light in his life for which Christ our Lord of a God has called that you are the light of this earth every believer have to be the way the truth and the life every believer have to be the light in the midst of this darkened people don't take it so easily, dear brother, on your pilgrimage trip. Your pilgrimage trip, even after salvation, just by faith alone in Christ alone, giving to you the eternal life, doesn't mean that you enjoy your life and you come back and meet in the hell or the deeds of the hell to be proven on this earth. After salvation, it meant to say, Lord, our God is our sanctification, you are set apart. Through his wisdom, we need to walk and prove his righteousness because we to prove we are being the redeemed in Christ and walking in the wilderness we take wrong steps but when we are in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit continually that's what the scripture says be controlled of the Spirit so that when you're living in the Spirit then you can walk in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in this wilderness you do not know how to walk but it has to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit therefore we have been so blessed if you have been born to a Christian parents of you so be unbelievers and though the unbelievers, where our Lord of God gives for them an equal privilege and equal opportunity, but their desire to know this light should be number one than anything else on this earth. If they don't look upon this number one priority to be for Christ, then they're going to lose it. As well as the believing parents, if they don't teach their children to walk in this light, they shall make their children no different from to be the unbelieving men of this earth. And that's a great problem for us, dear brother. How thankful we need to be to the Lord of our God not to be fallen in the hands of the Pentecostal realm. If not, you would have destroyed your own life and you will never change. Though the Bible tells. And this man represents my Lord as a weekly business, monthly business, yearly business. For what they do, not to the glorifying of the Lord. And they tell that's their glory. But what glory we have. We have the glory of the Lord of God to the maximum through his word. But for them, their glory is what? Gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and talking along in tongues. And they say they have done great works. But the problem for you, dear brother, and what we are telling for you to understand is to wake up, wake up, wake up and get out of such things. And rebuild once again in the daily teaching of the word of the Lord of God. So that you can truly understand when the most mighty one will certainly cause your face to become bold. In your appearances through the wisdom of Christ. Your light will shine like a bright glory. And for that reason you and I have been kept alive, dear brethren, in this church age. And how many of the people will understand about these things, we do not know. The sacred lampstand in the life of every believer. This Hebrew word or teaches for us, it's an opposite to walk in darkness. And it gives a life in contrast to death. Why do you want to die a sinner to death? Says when Pro Psalms 56, 13, 89, 15, Probe 16, 15 and Micah 7, 8. The contrast for which you have been kept and you walk in the opposite of it will certainly result in death. But the whore also signifies the closely related life and happiness that we walk in the valley. Though we walk in the shadow of death, we do not worry because we have been there in the presence of the Lord of our God day by day. We are having that light for us day by day. The Hebrew word or the light which also represents for us a life and happiness in Christ. And many of the people who don't walk in this reality they don't understand what it is.
and though they tell the famous blessings that to tell that Christ our Lord our God has been there for us to understand that his his, his light has been shining or in the Hebrew word or it can also symbolize for you prosperity and they can tell the light which means bringing for you a newborn baby or joy of all of these things but when they don't have the true light of the formula for it that is when we read in Psalms 31 16 or 67 1 or Psalms 80 verses 3 comma 7 and 19 and followed by Psalms 119 135 when the light of the true shining of Christ doesn't shine in us the formula for you you haven't learnt about it and do you know what Psalms 119 136 teaches for us from my eyes like rivers the waters are running down because the people are not able to walk in their law or keep their law or guard their law and if you don't grow up to such great lesson in the present Christendom where we find the people are certainly not walking in the word of the Lord of our God and if every pastor teacher doesn't wake up to quote Psalms 119 136 like rivers, waters are running down through our eyes because they are not keeping the law then knowingly many people will be perished in the metamorphical meaning number one light represents the instruction Psalms 119, 105 and 130 followed by Proverbs 623 and the greatest one of Ecclesiastes 8 1 and Generally speaking, darkness will certainly associate with death, failure, suffering, folly and sin. But whereas light of the word of the Lord of God is associated with true life, salvation, by that we mean deliverance at everything, though there may be thousand to my right hand or ten thousand towards my left hand, from all of the troubles of a Lord of God is going to deliver you out. That's what salvation is all about, like the way how Apostle Paul also writes, I have been delivered out for my salvation of the flesh. Not the salvation where the people think because they don't have yet the eternal life. But we are talking about the salvation. By that means to say, soteria, deliverance for you in the midst of this evil traps which will be placed. And if you say yes to volition, to your old sin nature, you are going to fall a trap into it. But we say no to the old sin nature and we say yes to the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Then through his word, what does it say? Then what is the light that you have in your thinking? You walk according to the truth and you will be delivered. That's the salvation is all about. So light is associated with life, salvation, prosperity, wisdom and justice. And what is the thing that we are able to look upon today? When it has been used as an instruction for us. When such light has been shining in the midst of our lives. When that light is the source for us in us being associated which is not independent of it. Because of his light being associated with us he has made for us to share the righteousness of his son. To share his destiny, to share his hairship. And not only just to conform to the image of his dear beloved son. But to grow up to be mature enough like his son on this earth then yet you don't come to live a life the life which is calling for you to be bright like a light and which has to be shown forth and from where does it come it comes from the hand of the Lord our God yeah Ephesians 1 4 to tell before the foundation of the world we have been designed for Christ to be holy and blameless it comes from him the source of its power is from him and from there we get our all reviving work of the Lord of our God. And what is that strength, dear brethren? The boldness. Such enlightenment life for which you have been called, being given for you to fill the praise of the Lord of our God on this earth. A great fulfilling of the nature which was not been given in the past but now been given for us. Demands for us to show forth the heavenly life as a splendid glory of him on this earth Such great splendid glory of radiance through our life should be shown forth In each and every description of his quality on this earth So what does the light instruct us? We find our answer in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 1 Light constantly reflects us to understand That the wisdom of this world is a vain glory 
it constantly teaches us to understand that the kakma of Christ our Lord our God in each and every mannerism of calling is far greater therefore we find who is the wise man and kakma which meant to say the skillfulness of the world's wisdom and our Lord our God says in Isaiah 41 21 get them we can have this course let them produce their staunch arguments and let them see what they're doing but in all of them our Lord our God has the knowledge of Yada the one who has the wisdom of Christ day by day being inculcated in his soul he has the knowledge to certainly interpret or explain the matters of the word of the Lord our God and no one can explain that because he has to take in by the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit day by day breath by breath and being in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit day by day breath by breath then he can interpret no one because the deep things of the Lord our God of Arauna what we have been understanding to describe to inscribe to prescribe and to subscribe the Kathab writings of the Lord our God in the terms of Arauna which meant to say to examine to to certainly trace and to certainly explore the matter and once again to have an insatiable desire to learn the truth the person who has been there constantly thirsting for the more word of the Lord our God will certainly do it because he wants the sword of the spirit in the midst of the spiritual wickedness or the spiritual warfare what Adam and Eve failed, the first Adam and Eve, the great design for the which our Lord of our God has placed on this earth right now in the church age through the last Adam being given for us to put on the new man in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit working out in the small matter of time given to us to witness the truth and to do the great work which is nothing but to produce Christ in you and more fate in forming Christ in you. What Adam failed, the first Adam, now we being the second Adam's grace. From Adama to Aretas, from the soulish to the spiritual, the wisdom of this world to prove his work, the wisdom of this world to prove MGG, maximum glorification for law and we have been placed over here on this earth by attaining to that interpretation to explain to these people who are perishing in their thoughts. And who are the people that they are perishing? When we look into the scripture, these are the people who haven't had the right reverence towards the Lord our God. And what is that kakma or kokma what we learn day by day? The kokma wherewith you have been placed over here, dear brethren, it's a true wisdom which, which leads us to river Lord God Almighty. And the skeptics will never find this kind of wisdom and never they will know the true meaning of life. Why do you want to die a sinner to death by being a skeptic? What our Lord our God has revealed and kept, go back and dig in the original languages of the scriptures. It is not what the world can invent. It is not what you can think and interpret your Bible in your times to represent the old inventions. No. What the Bible tells for you to believe and to obey his mandates. What the word says for us. No matter heaven and the earth will vanish off, but his word abides forever. That's enough. And what the word says, those who die in Christ will be resurrected. Those who sleep in Christ will be resurrected. What the word says, no name for you given for you in the heaven and the earth so that you can be saved apart from the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What the word says in John 3, 18, 36, it teaches for us already those who haven't believed in Christ being judged and they have been judged for the wrath of the Lord of God. And those who believe, they have eternal life. That's it. The people may think it's a foolish one that we're preaching, but we don't mind because we are here to fear the Lord of God. But the skeptics, like these people who are inventing the things pertaining to the humanoids, and they tell they are doing great works, because we can talk without having resurrection to the one who has been dead, by taking and extracting the DNA. Do you know what, dear brethren? Evil to the core. Having a question to ask against the Creator itself. And the people think the Creator has given the solution for us 2,000 years back. But many of the people have been elapsed or been dead. And they don't wait for the appearance of the Lord our God to come and take us back home. They don't wait for the rapture of the church. They say already everything has been demolished, the temple being demolished. <laughs> what about the Zadakites? What about the Millennium Temple being told by Ezekiel? And yet they don't have the right fear of the Lord of our God to learn this true wisdom. Do you know why? Because they are skeptics. 
they are miscalculation of fitan logia men if they don't replace with exegeomai in the pulpit their paralogizomai will be always fitan logia morologia and they speak the vain things of this earth skeptics will never learn this true life in christ they will never make their life to be a purposeful one in the lord therefore dear brethren james 3 verses 13 through 17 followed by proverbs 14 verses 6 and 7 teaches to us the kakma teaches for us the entire life experiences military diplomacy shrewdness prudence practical spirituality Kakma is certainly nothing but which has to be inculcated day by day through the mind of Christ. And Kakma is never independent of law. He has to give us that. And the word says, if anyone is lacking wisdom, let him ask to the Lord our God and he shall provide it for you. Kakma is never independent because it has been found only in the Lord of a God. And that sort of race of Adam who look upon to this Kakma, they will be like a light lumining shining upon their face. Not only just a light lumining, but the majesty, the boldness, the strength and the power of the might of the scripture will be obviously the indicator upon their face. And they will be certainly no alter or no changing of that glorious shining upon their face because they constantly abide to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. Every believer ought to grow up for such standards of growth in the mind of Christ day by day. If the believers doesn't come to show forth by getting every thought into captivity for Christ and pulling down that which goes against itself to be called as highly puffed of knowledge or anything or everything that goes against the right word of the Lord our God which has been given for us as a gift of revelation to the sinful mankind to make their lives to be more holy and perfect and Lord our God has not left us helpless he has given for us the highest and the greatest polity of privileges of all time the completed kind of scripture and above all the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and above all the right and true bona fide gifted pastor teachers who can lead us in the right path of right exegesis day by day to be taught he has given us everything then why it is your face will get not the luminous shining of the word of the Lord of a God in the Kakma of Christ. When you know the Kakma of the Lord of a God, your face shines bright like a lion. When you have the wisdom of the Lord of a God in you, you know the people are perishing, not having that wisdom, and there is nothing fear upon your face to be changed. You speak what the word says like a foolish one, that's it. And you don't alter your words, you don't change your words, looking upon the congregation and telling that if I tell this, the people will not give me or I will not have a great invitations to go and visit with those humanoids. Tell the truth. The truth what you have in Christ, preach it out. You are being called not to look the cockma of this earth. We are being called to the cockham of Christ which could be gathered day by day graciously given to you the great calling in Christ what we have dear brother and we enjoy breath by breath if you grieve and squelch and lie to the unveiling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and never understand the true meaning of life for you which you have been kept alive you would certainly seek and what do you seek skeptical lie the life of rationalism, the life of empiricism, the life which is against mysticism. And where you end up? You end up not to give, you end up not to give to this world and showing forth the greatest light luminaries of the Lord. And you end up not to realize your true calling, which has been given for us in Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 2 to 4. 
if the people would wake up to understand, to get out from their roguish mind of thought, they would certainly seek the mercies of the Lord our God, and they would search the true life in Christ. How long you want to wear the dress of unholiness upon you? You are being called to be a king, put upon the king attire. The king attire calls to put upon in the terms of Endikaya Sunyakaya Hosiatis Thesalatiya. In the benignity of truth, in his holiness, you need to wear. Why do you want to wear upon your neck the sin of this old sin nature still reigning in you? The shrewdness, the cunningness of this wisdom when we live a practical spirituality, this kakma will teach for us. Because it is from the Lord of a God. Because we are staying in the wilderness of this earth till our Lord of a God's purpose has been fulfilled. He shows, he shows for us the right track. The path which he leads us only by his light. The light being found in the word of the Lord of a God. And the sword of the Spirit is nothing but the word of the Lord of a God. And for the sanctification which he says for us in John 17, 17, sanctify them by what? The truth of the mind of Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, when we hear the report of such, if you truly fear and if you have that holy respect to become a devotee and follower of him, so that in a, in a particular systematical process and practice that your entire life, in all the days of you, then you shall live a true life of kaya, and what is that kaya? Every believer in Christ has been designed to gain our very momentum of breathing upon the word of the Lord of God itself. And if you don't want to live such a life, that is left to you. Does not Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 15 teaches to us life and death before you. Good and evil have been placed before you. And what is that report of you that you and what is that you need to take? You need to make known to understand the roguish mind of your thoughts will never have you to look upon the compassion of Christ. They make known for you to understand the wisdom of this earth. But never you will understand that our Lord our God has covered our eyes to look upon the glory of Yahweh Elohim day by day. Because we are of the heavenly citizens on this earth and we are being called to be like a light luminaries as a shining one to fill. And that is what that is which has been missing on this earth. To fill on this earth the greatest glory of divine pleasure wherewith Lord our God to be called for his when he looks unto us that I am not ashamed to be called them as my son but in return when our Lord our God could call us these are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased for that reason dear brethren we need to be like the brightness of the light and the brightness of the light is just not to have in your mind but to show forth in a practical life like the way how the ivory tusks of the elephant will be appearing to be, sh to be shown forth and to be made known to the dear brethren so that this strength of the Lord our God of O's one will be given only by the Lord. And that what the strength is? The kokma, the wisdom of Christ, not the wisdom of this world. That strength of the most profound one will come from where? From our Lord our God and that's the wisdom, that's the kokma. And it is from him, it is from his yad. And what is that word yad? It is what he has commissioned us. It is what it comes from him. The source of wisdom is from the Lord of God. Does not Revelation 5 teaches for us when all the people, the myriads of the myriads, when they come, the glory and the honor and the power and the privilege, everything has been in the hands of the Lord of God. To him be the glory to the highest. It is he who has the power, it is he who has the strength, it is he which and everything has the wisdom. And how odd we look to divert from the right path of the word of the Lord of our God and to take the discourse of this world. Doesn't it look for you to be shamed? Your humanoids cannot represent your resurrections. For that reason our Lord of our God has made long back by eating the broiled fish and honeycomb to tell to this world your vain thoughts are always vain. Look into the word of the Lord of a God. Lord of a God, none to perish, but everyone to come to the thorough knowledge of Christ. For that reason is long suffering and patient for us. How many days more you want to use your thoughts for this vain glory of this earth? And the people may love the vain glory of this earth, but we are not so. We need to make the face of us in the wisdom of the Lord of a God to show forth. 
nothing on this earth can alter the expression upon our face that we hold the truth of Christ in our minds. When we follow the truth, when we walk in Him, when we live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, nothing on this earth to be feared than to fear whether have we fulfilling the right word to the every people to whom our Lord our God has been sending us. That's the only fear we have. The fear from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, which we need to teach day by day. The fear, if at all we are passing down that word and not given a proper explanation, to tell to the Lord our God, give us that greatest valuable information for us when we kneel down in thy presence and learn, so that we can thoroughly explain to the people thy wisdom, because they are of thy people. And that wisdom should be given by the Lord our God to do it not by us, we cannot acquire it. Therefore we speak the mysteries of God among them who are mature, who love to learn the word of the Lord of our God day by day. And that mystery will be taught by Lord God the Holy Spirit and none else on this earth can teach it. So which way you want to go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those I have without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Lord, my God, my salvation. That is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple, believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to grow, is to grow up, is to is to carry Sothon Lagan, herald the word in season or out of season, because the diamond my witnesses wherewith he has been called. The number one diamond my witnesses in Wellington Trinity, followed by Babylon in our hands, and number two diamond my witnesses of our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry, besides nature, the entire Angelic Coast will be witnesses. But what is our work? Witness the truth, and your face should show forth that you are righteous and the face should show forth you have in your mind only the truth and your face should shine only for truth and the way how it how it shines though the people will come to alter the expressions upon your face you say we look only the mind of Christ and there is nothing because the ameth character of Christ is always the same it will not change and what and how thankful we need to be to the Lord our God who has given for us this day by day revolution of his Rima declaration for us to understand the Zoe concept of life not the Bios concept of life the highest blessed life for us given to in Proverbs 834 fulfilling Proverbs 8 love and to teach day by day yesterday today tomorrow coming to learn the word of the Lord our God and all the pleasures of this world being put together cannot even be equivalent to the pleasure what we get in the mind of Christ day by day and that's enough for us and Ecclesiastes 8 1 tells by the power of the most high God you shall certainly be shining like light luminaries people should be worried because today it is a shamefacedness for us not to look and not to find men like Moses, not to get a men like Christ our Lord our God who was being there in his flesh to prove and he said I am you if, and, and he said being conformed to the image of his son that is our glory and there are men who don't even come to be powerless like Moses so that they can be like Christ our Lord our God and shine forth at every breath. It's a shame for us. Because we don't find men like Daniel who kneel down and pray. We don't find like men who spend the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, like Moses. So that when he comes out, the people can look upon the shining glory of his face. So what is your life, dear brother, and you think? Our life is not of this earthly realm. We are the heavenly citizens. We need to shine to the full to this earth to prove that the wisdom of this world is foolishness. And the wisdom of Christ, our Lord, our God, though it is foolishness to this world, is wiser than the wisdom of this world. Think over these issues, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in learning the truth. Because we have nothing more for us than to teach the word of the Lord, our God, day by day, our life has. And to train as many as people who can take these tapes can understand the truth. Today there may be some disturbances, of the wind, but yet to listen the word of the Lord of a God, because this is your life. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship with thee through thy word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, challenges by this message and make it a source of blessing, O Lord. 
the blessing which have designed for us in eternity past to, to live a true life and not to be skeptics and drift away the true meaning and the true concept of life for which you have been given, the concept of Zoe and the concept of care. We have been designed only to live upon thy word, to survive upon thy truth and nothing else on this earth. Father, such as diligently, O Lord, see if there is offense in us, O Lord, lead us in the way of understanding. Father, if there is anything that is not having the right reverence towards the fear of you, O Lord, kindly help us to overcome it by thy truth, by thy word. Nothing on this earth is more important, O Lord, for us than to honor thy word above thy name. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, we thank you for such great glorious illumination of thy word day by day, so that, Lord, we can shine forth as lights, as being bold as a lion, as righteous we are in Christ's sake. In Christ, matchless, peerless, gracious name, we pray, Sovereign Lord. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these terms. Amen.